Look at that thing. Do you see it? Oh yeah. That was different. What was that? The scrublands of central Florida are one of the most unique ecosystems on Earth. Remnant stands of white sand that are the relics of former island chains, these dry habitats give rise to some of the most unusual wildlife in North America. Red widows and colorful snakes call these regions home, but beneath the surface, there are even more unusual secrets. My name is Spencer Hoffman. I'm a biologist and filmmaker from North Carolina on a mission to tell the stories of our planet's most extreme wildlife. And I'm on the lookout for a particularly weird wolf spider. See, normally we think of the gentle giants whose eyes twinkle in the grass of a summer night. But this oddity of the underworld is lurking deep in burrows, where it is seldom seen by human eyes. The bizarre geolycosa pushes wolf spider biology to the absolute extreme, but to find out why, we need to understand what makes wolf spiders special in the first place. Look at the size of the spider. This part of the country, the true giants are the wolf spiders. And these guys are absolute scourge of the forest floor here. And they're hiding under these rocks and these giant burrows and stuff. If I had to guess, this might be a Carolina wolf spider or a close relative. Pretty much any of the wolf spiders that get this big are gonna be burrow dwellers. Look at that face there. See those big old eyes? The wolf spider has incredible vision that helps with its hunting strategy. These guys are active hunters. They're heading out of their burrow to forage for food under cover of darkness, using those huge eyes to visually hunt for prey on the forest floor. And the tiny eyes that line their face actually act as sort of a compass and GPS system. So while these main eyes are actually looking for their prey, the little eyes are kind of helping them orient themselves so they don't get lost in the grassy matrix of this clearing here. You know, for you or me, traversing this is not that bad. Sure, it's a little bit of a hill, but we got long legs. We can, we can just step over stuff. These guys have to walk through all these tangles of grass and underneath rocks and over pine cones to actually track down their prey. It can be very easy to get lost. And trust me when I say there are things a lot scarier than this wolf spider that are hiding out here in this forest. We're actually hoping to see some of them while we're out here, but wolf spider, that'll absolutely do. The wolf spiders hail from the family Lycosidae, one of the largest and most diverse spider families. Approximately 1 in 20 species of spider is a wolf spider. These spiders get huge and are among the top invertebrate predators in the habitats they call home. But when competition is fierce and they're faced with rather extreme conditions, they've found some unusual ways to survive, just like our burrowing geolycosa. So basically I'm scanning they're no bigger than the size of like a dime. Here's a tiny one. I don't know if that's really that useful. Look at these, they're almost perfectly circular. That's how they stick out. You'll see little ant mounds. You'll see little like other like reptile burrows and stuff. You'll see places where other little things have dug, but they're not like perfectly round. These spiders have almost a perfectly circular burrow. The sand scrubs of Florida are like hidden pockets of desert. Despite the humidity, these habitats see scorching sun during the day in much cooler nights. Like the deserts of the Southwest, harvester ants are among the only creatures active above the surface during the day, but it's under the surface where things get interesting. The reptiles, insects, and spiders of this habitat have all evolved some degree of sand swimming behavior hiding in the top layers of sand while moving about in order to dodge most of the brutal heat. Now look at this little thing right here. Probably one of the strangest lizards I've ever laid eyes on in the US. This is a sand skink. It almost looks more like a legless lizard, but if you look really closely at the front, you see he has these two tiny little feet that he's folded against his body there. And in the back, another pair of tiny little legs that are almost completely useless. They look almost like a tiny version of like an amphiuma or something. These large eel-like salamanders that really only use their tiny vestigial legs to sort of move themselves along the muddy bottoms of creeks. That's not totally different from what this guy's doing. You can see that sleek, streamlined body, extremely, extremely smooth, almost like glossy to touch there. Very soft, very fragile lizards here, but they're using that sleek, streamlined body to actually swim through the sand. At their size, the physics of sand is actually different than it is for us. For us, we can like walk over it and stuff, but these guys can actually slip in between sand particles using that to basically escape from predators, hunt for their prey, and live out their lives. You can see on my, on my skin here, he can't move around a ton. And it's actually pretty convenient because then he can't escape super easily. But in these South Florida scrublands, 
some of the animals are super incredibly unique because of how unique this habitat actually is. These white sand scrubs are remnant islands from when Florida was basically entirely underwater. The only land masses were these chunks of sand. So a lot of the life forms that can be found here are incredibly unique, including these little lizards. The scrub pushes these creatures to the absolute extreme, which is why I'm hoping to see a geolycosa in the wild. We actually found quite a few burrows. The only trick now is getting one out. We've seen a lot of these, but they've been really hard to catch. Got him. You got him? Yep. He's in here. Definitely got him though. Let's see if I can just kind of shake him out into. He was in this. Yep, there he is. There he is. In this tube. He's not too pleased about being out, but look at that. Look at that wolf spider. Look at him. Oh, he's threat posing. Look at that. I've never seen that before in a wolf spider. Oh! Oh, he's angry. Like a funnel web. Look at that. <laughs> Have you seen this? That is insane. Now, what I've got right here is a very, very special spider. In fact, I didn't even realize how special this was until I actually went out and tried to catch one. See, I'd always heard of these little burrowing wolf spiders, but this is the geolycosa. These are the burrow living subterranean wolf spiders, and they are probably one of the coolest wolf spiders in the entire world. It's tiny, it doesn't look like much at all, but this is a creature packed with so many secrets that I'm literally learning more about it every second I interact with it. What I knew about these guys before was they are a bit of a smaller wolf spider, and they are kind of unusual looking compared to your typical wolf spider. They have kind of a very domed, big head, those big old buck teeth chelicerae there, and kind of these shorter squatter legs. They're built, crazy enough, almost more like a subterranean megalomorph spider. And that makes sense because unlike many other wolf spiders, which might live in burrows and come out to kind of actively forage at night, these are almost exclusively living inside their burrows and not leaving very far at all. And the craziest thing I'm learning is their demeanor. See, wolf spiders typically are much more curious, much more interactive spiders, but these almost act more like purse web spiders or funnel webs. I have never in my entire life seen a wolf spider threat pose, showing those fangs, raising those legs, trying to make itself look bigger. I have never seen a wolf spider behave like that ever. I've seen wandering spiders do it. I've seen funnel web spiders do it. I've seen purse web spiders do it but never a wolf spider until these unusual geolycosa. And that makes sense. This is a subterranean spider. It doesn't want to be exposed. And when we captured it, we brought it above the surface where it's not comfortable, it's not in its element. When we're interacting with it above the surface where it's not comfortable, it wants nothing more than to get back in the shadows, back in the safety of its burrow, and it is going to show just how passionately upset it is about being above the surface. Now, fortunately, unlike the funnel webs and the wandering spiders, the venom of this spider is not very dangerous. Just like any other wolf spider, if I were to get bit, it'd be like a little pinch. Maybe I'd have some localized swelling or something, but I would not be in any danger. But it is just honestly shocking to me to see a wolf spider behave like this. It's just, it's never something I've seen one of these spiders do. Honestly, I don't even know if we knew that these spiders threat pose like that before today. I have never seen photos of it. I've never seen anybody talk about it. It. Even like close friends of mine who have worked with these spiders many times have never seen this behavior before and that is just honestly insane. That has got to be one of the most unusual wolf spiders I have ever seen. It, it, it's a tiny little porcelain gray spider. It doesn't look like much at all, but as we're seeing with this very surprising, very unusual interaction, we are still learning about the secrets of the underworld of these kind of remote habitats. This is a spider that's only found in these sand scrubs of Florida and not one that is often seen by people. So every time we see them, there is a chance to learn something new. And I know I sure did. Now I'd imagine, like other wolf spiders, I would assume that these are, these are still fairly intelligent. You can see they have those large eyes. So I would imagine their vision is still fairly good, even though they're not using it to hunt the same way other wolf spiders are. And you can kind of see now that it's been exposed for a while, it's not threat posing as much as it is trying to escape. This spider's figured out, okay, if this thing was gonna eat me, it would have eaten me by now. I don't know why it's continuing to hold me, but I wanna get back to my burrow. I wanna get out of the sunlight. It burns us. And uh, they wanna get back underground to go wait for ants and crickets to stop by their burrow. 
that is something that I never thought I'd see. And I'm very happy that I got to see and something that maybe you also can appreciate just how weird the spider is. Wolf spiders are often considered to be one of the more basic spider types, but even among these standard spiders, there are those that have pushed their kind to the limits to thrive in the world's most challenging environments. These geolycosa are some of the weirdest and perhaps most misunderstood wolf spiders there are, and I'm not even sure how much footage of them exists online. This is likely one of the first serious looks into their hidden lives that has ever been documented, and they are certainly a treat to capture on film. Wolf spiders aren't the only standard animal that hides tons of biological secrets though. Many of our venomous snakes here in the US are overlooked all the time. If you ever wondered how cottonmouth venom worked, I performed an experiment with human blood to demonstrate their untapped chemical power. If you want to see that video, check it out right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.